Welcome to New Life Stories. I'm Tabitha, your host, and this is Pastor Janet. We're going to get to know her salvation story today. Would you like to say hello? Hello. We are going to get to know our pastor a little bit. So, welcome. Thanks for braving the podcast life with me. Thanks for having me. (laughs) (laughs) That'd be interesting. Awesome. Yeah. So let's just jump in here. Uh, How did you get to Pulaski? Just do a little short version of Wisconsin from wherever you were. We were living, I'm refraining from being silly about that comment because we drove across country to get here, but... um, so that was just being silly. But we were living in Redding, California, mm-hmm. um, uh, just, you know, hanging out there in Redding. And then um, Samuel and Rachel, whom you all know, uh, moved back here in uh, 2000 and... Oh, 21? 21, I think. Yeah. And so um, California is a, <clears throat> a, a curious place to live. So we were all uh, waiting waiting on the Lord as to what's next in our journey. And um, so, like I said, Samuel and Rachel moved back here. And, and Samuel and Rachel are who to you? Oh, Samuel is my son. Rachel is my daughter-in-law. You'll know Rachel um, as Rachel Clausen um, before she was Rachel Birch, so Valerie and Dan Clausen's daughter. Mm-hmm. Um, and so um, they moved back here, and then Samuel was here for a little bit, called you here, you came. And we we thought, oh, because we had been watching New Life on um, live stream or yep, live streaming, because mm-hmm. um, that was all during COVID, and we were really super enjoying the services, and we thought, oh, that's 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 a pastor that we could come under, and um, so then Tabitha Samuel called Tabitha to come up, and so we thought, well, like you know, we're not, we're just waiting in California. I mean. Sean was working, Sean, my husband, um, was working at State Farm. And at that time, of course, everybody is working from home. From home. Yeah. So, I mean, he could work from home here. So so we just thought, hey, we'll just come to Wisconsin. Yep. That's yeah, awesome. So that's how that worked out. What were you doing in California? Waiting on the Lord. Are you from California? No. No. No, I'm from uh, Oakville, Ontario, Canada, and uh, we had moved from uh, Canada in 2003 to be a, um, on staff at a church in Washington State, and uh, we were in Washington State for 12 years when uh, we thought, oh, it'd be really good to follow our kids down to Reading <laughs> and go to BSSM. So that's a journey. So that's what what brought us to being in Redding, California. Yeah. Yeah. And then the Lord provided an escape plan. An escape. An exit strategy. Yeah. Yeah. Not an escape plan. I call it an escape plan. But an ex- that's different. An exit strategy. Right. Yeah. So <coughs> when... Were you saved? What age? um, What year? Uh I was, um, you know, uh, 28, 29 when I called out to the Lord to help me. Mm -hmm. Really, those were my words. That's 1990, um, November 1990. And that was in Oakville, Ontario? Sudbury. Sudbury. Sudbury, Ontario, um, northern Northern, north of the province. Okay. Yeah. Um, so what was your life like surrounding that time? What brought you to the place of, yeah. of salvation? Okay. Um, that, that, that story has lots of details. So I, I'm kind of like a detail person. The short version is when I, tw- when I'm 20, not when I was 20 and I got saved. <laughs> so that's <laughs> Woo, good night. <laughs> thanks for joining us. That's it yeah. y'all. Thank there you. You, you Learned a little bit more about your yeah. leader. <laughs> <laughs> so now you know. Um, but the longer version was is um, a longer version. Um, so we, 
were living in a small community before we moved to Sudbury. Um, I had t- we had two older children. I had a game plan, you know, of um, living life uh, when we got married. When Sean and I got married, you know, we're gonna be married for five years. Then afterwards, we'll start having a family and have a house and all that kind of stuff. But um, that kind of didn't hold true. Um, like 10 months later after we were married when we had our first daughter. So already <laughs> things were going a different way than I had thought. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, so when uh, I was, um, when we had moved to uh, Sudbury, well, actually we had moved to a, a small community called Powassan, living out on a five acre farm, kind of living like, you know, Green Acres, the show Green Acres, like that. Um, city folk coming out to the country and don't know what you're doing. Yeah. Um, and so I was pregnant with my third child there, which was a, a surprise. Um, and what ages were your two other? My two, my eldest one was uh, four and my, my son was two. Um, and life was in our process had become really super difficult in terms of, <clears throat> well, every aspect of life, like, relationships, finances, um, and then this pregnancy that I was having was having um, a lot of difficulties. Mm-hmm. Um, through that time, um, uh, trying to navigate that, Sean had uh, got a, started with another company. Uh, um, he was doing, an in, he was part of an insulation company, mm-hmm. and that took him up to uh, Sudbury, Ontario. So in that process um, of long distance living with, um, we stayed in Powassan and he was in Sudbury, added to the stress of life. And like, there's just a lot of details in there. But so just knowing that um, things were really super difficult on all fronts for me. Yeah. Um, and then we moved up to Sudbury and uh, we were living there. And um, my pregnancy throughout the the months were was very difficult. Um, continuing, you know, when you go for your monthly checkups and that kind of thing, there was always a concern about something. And so, so everything was just culminating. It was just like everything on every area of my life was just really hard and falling apart and and not not easy. I was. 27, 28 years old, and I didn't have family around, and I felt super, super lonely. Um, you were also living on land, like on a little hobby farm. and Yeah, when we were in Powassan, and it was, mm-hmm. yeah, and, you know, experienced, like, uh, the well wasn't working, like, I mean, like, days, like, right. without water, and, you know, I had to chop my own wood and keep the wood stove burning and try and, you know, get myself out of snow, out of the driveway. When and you were the stuck. only yeah. adult there at yeah. the time? Yeah. yeah. So that was super fun. And um, so when we were, in, uh, I'm trying to make the details come together well, um, mm-hmm. while we moved to Sudbury and Sean was working and I'm just still trying to we're just navigating all this, this, these struggles that we're experiencing. And um, what finally came to um, a tipping point is we got a, um, on one of our, our last doctor's appointments, the doctor was very concerned um, in regards to what the baby was experiencing and what they were seeing on ultrasounds. And so we had to go go to um, a, a neonatal center uh, in a in a city a little like a couple hours away from us because they were not equipped to accommodate what I may have needed. So um, that was that was yeah that was kind of the thing that put it over. Um, we went there, and uh, after many, um, many te- much testing and, and examinations and such like that, it was determined that I needed to have a cesarean section. And I was about um, seven months pregnant, 
and really super, super huge, mm-hmm. super huge and, and a lot of discomfort. And anyways, we had the cesarean and our little girl was born mm-hmm. and um, then she, so she was born, but then four hours later she passed away. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, that was the, you know, that's, that's the, the big, huge thing. So that's big devastation. Yeah. So we, we traveled, you know, after I was um, uh, discharged from the hospital, we traveled back home. And so that began now. Now this is a whole new beginning and all the other stuff. Oops, sorry, people. All the other struggles are still there. Like mm-hmm. life hasn't gotten any you better. You two other kids. Yeah. Your husband's still working out of town. No, but we were in the same town, oh, okay. but he's working in this insulation business gotcha. and financially life isn't good. Uh, relationships mm-hmm. are not good. I have nobody and uh, really um, to, you know, just super lonely in that way. And, but now I'm, I'm trying to recover from the cesarean and, and the death of a, of a baby and, mm-hmm. and that kind of stuff. Um, um, in, in, in the, in my process of the early part of my journey, I found, I knew of some people that were born again Christians, which I, at that point didn't really know, like I, I know no lingo of what you're talking about. And, um, but without all the details, I, I had seen thus these people live and thought they were crazy Um, but in that, in that desperate time, I knew like, oh man, I knew because I, I'd hung out with them and I, they had just lived their life around me and knew that there was something that they had that I didn't. And, um, so one day when I'm at home by myself and, uh, my husband's working and the kids were being cared for by somebody else. In desperation, I totally just remember having been totally desperate and just falling to the falling on the stairs, not falling, but kneeling on the like just going and sitting on the stairs and just saying, Oh God, help me. Mm-hmm. And that that was my beginning of of understanding um, salvation. Um, I totally probably had no no. Uh, I wouldn't. I would have no understanding of what any of the words mean or any of that con. What that concept means, but I do know that um, that that was transformative for me because um, it was just like I just I know now. Sorry, people. That um, when I called out to the Lord, He is. He. This is an open door, mm-hmm. and He He was waiting, and He swooped in, like feeling like. You know, it's like a thousand legions of angels were released on my ha- on my behalf, mm-hmm. and they came and swooped me up, yeah. and and um, then so, you know, then there's holy. It Spirit. took some time for you to realize that, though. Yeah, it wasn't like when you were on the stairs, you like no, 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 felt I, something. No, what was that experience like? How long did it feel? How long did it take for you to realize? Oh, there's like this salvation thing. That's that's a, a whole <coughs> big journey for me because from that point, um, you know, I still was weeks by myself and um, had been uh, watching, you know, seeking like you know. So now you're hungry, you're, you're seeking, you've been seeking for a while because life hasn't been good, and I've been seeking for a while. And mm-hmm. like I said, I had this these this this couple that I had encountered, and and always trying to. Um, uh, understand and you got this life's a mess life's a mess where are you gonna go right like mm-hmm. um in that process i watched a, a commercial on tv after i called out to the lord watched a commercial on tv mm-hmm. oh i should tell you that my husband um was one of seven children in a family with the his father w- is a pastor or a <coughs> minister so you know, so there's that bit of understanding, but so you not knew about God, like that God was a th- yeah. thing. You just didn't have any concept of yeah. anything else. Yeah, of a what a relationship looks like, mm-hmm. or or the need of it, yeah. or because that was never modeled for me 
even in that relation, even in his family. Um, so I saw this commercial of another church, really super good commercial, and I thought, hmm, maybe I'll go try that. In uh, 1989-ish, right? No, 1990. 1990. Or n- now we're in 1991 okay. probably because okay. my baby Dana was born in November of 1990, and this is the, that was the beginning of the process, so it was probably, gotcha. you know, now we're... It's taken me a bit to, so we're into 1991, 1991. Yep. And so I saw this commercial, and I thought, that's, oh, I'm going to go there. And m- Sean had no interest in going, but, like, I'm desperate. I'm desperate for, mm-hmm. for life. And uh, so I take myself and my eldest daughter to this church, <laughs> and, man, it freaked me right out. <laughs> What, so, uh, what did it end up being? Like, what kind of church was it? It like? was the Church of the Latter-day Saints. Mm-hmm. Super nice people, very inviting, a little too close for my comfort at that time because my the walls around me were really big and the boundaries were really wide. Mm-hmm. And they wanted to, to hug me <laughs> <laughs> and call me sister. And I'm like, I don't know you. And they took, they just swooped my <coughs> daughter away from me. And so, but um, in my so post. Pro- probably didn't feel very safe when no, you're like yeah. going through something with your children and, and yeah. someone just yeah. takes yeah, yeah. them away. And at that point, I, um, I, had, I had been, um, I forgot a very important point. The friends that I knew when I was in Powassan that were born again Christians, mm-hmm. at one point I had asked them, um, for a Bible, mm-hmm. and they gave me one, and they told me to you begin reading in John, but I didn't. I hadn't started looking at it or anything, but I still had this Bible mm. with me. Surprisingly, after we, you know, when we moved into uh, when we moved in Sudbury, and um, and I remember that Bible, and I remembered asking for it, and so I looked for it. And that I remember everything they told me to begin reading in John. And mm-hmm. so while I was recovering from the cesarean and, and working through my grief, um, I, I started reading. I started reading that Bible. And mm-hmm. so that was, that was impactful. I would not have known anything um, uh, about what was happening to me, except that... Uh, when I started reading in John and reading about Jesus, it was just like the most, the most amazing thing that could happen to a person to be reading about such a person and just feeling like, oh, this is, I this was doing something to me. This was doing mm-hmm. something to my heart, to my soul, and um, giving me something that I really needed. So, when I went to that church, I knew by that point I knew nah. There's God and there's Jesus and there's the Bible. You want to get they they, they there was another book, <laughs> which <laughs> you're like know. don't add to my reading list. <laughs> no, I just knew like and I I feel that it was part mm. of um, Holy Spirit on my journey that He kept me close mm-hmm. and gave me um, before I even knew like discernment to know that this this isn't feeling right. Mm-hmm. So um, so then. From there, uh, I'm going to make it fast. Then uh, the next church that I went to would have been uh, months later, po- po- possibly. Um, well, actually, I know it was. It was in in March of that same year. Mm-hmm. Went to another church where I saw another commercial, and the guy, the pastor, was just phenomenal. He um, he would do these commercials, uh, talking to people about like life circumstances that you would be experiencing mm. and 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 then like things that you could relate to and then give you an answer to it. He'd say, well, and I can't give an example about it, but he would say, think about this and give you like something like like a biblical answer or, or something that Jesus Jesus would say, but in a, in a way that would uh, you would understand, like yeah. not you know, not, not Christianese. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so I saw that and I'm like, oh, let's go try that church. But uh, I think I had to go by myself again. Um, oh, no, I know what Sean and I went to see an Easter. I think they called it a cantata, an Easter <laughs> cantata. 
And I didn't know what a cantata was because <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know stuff like that. Anyways, um, so that was that was great. I, I, I appreciated that a lot. And um, but it was uh, still a bit of a journey before I could come into more understanding of what what I was experiencing. So it would I would say come September of that year. Um, having gone to that church a few times on and off and Sean not really being a part of that. Um, we had asked the pastors of that church to come to speak to us at my home. And they, they did like, I've just had such great people in my life in that regard. And they came and talked to us about the church that, that, that they were, that I had been to and uh, the, the pastor's wife she said to me, so you got to imagine that life has been super, 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 super difficult for me, super difficult in so many ways. Um, so she asked me when they were there visiting us, would you like to come? And I didn't even wait. Like, I don't care where you want to take me. I'll go with you. Like, she, mm -hmm. you know, I, that my my... I was so, so desperate, yeah. just so desperate that this lady was going to take me somewhere. Anywhere. Yeah. And she, these these people came to my home to talk to me about Jesus and she wants to take me somewhere. I just said yes. And so she took me to a prayer meeting the next day. And so... I had also had been in that time period, been watching um, a show called 100 Huntley Street. Yeah, it's like the 700 Club. 100 Club, yeah, because, um, you know, like I've had these other friends that were speaking to me about, about things. Mm -hmm. So I would watch that show, and I knew, like from watching it, that they talked about salvation and the sinner's prayer and such like that. Yeah. And so I... I were I would um, I would pray that prayer along with them whenever I watched it, the sinner's prayer, and be like, I, I yeah, I don't get it, you know, right? <laughs> like how how can that be? Mm. How can that be that you you just simply pray this prayer mm. and the Lord and comes? It's done. Yeah, yeah, and and you know, mm. so so when she took me that morning to the ladies prayer meeting at the church um that was it was just i you know how god's so amazing amazing holy spirit had just been walking with me and walking with me and preparing me for that that when i went to that prayer meeting um i had my my younger son sitting on my knee um and they said like okay anybody have prayer requests and so i did <laughs> I did. I said, uh, I do. And and so then they, you know, you get to share what your prayer request is. And my request was to ask Jesus into my heart. Mm. And so that just changed the dynamic of that room because mm. these wonderful ladies just stood there or sat there and looked at. It, it was just silent. The room just was silent. But they just lovingly came around me. Like no hesitation, just come lovingly came around me and like they didn't I didn't have to say certain words. It was just that it was just such a an encounter in the room that um, after I left and I was trying to um, my um, my new friend was driving me home and it was just like I was just amazed at what had just happened and how I felt and mm -hmm. What, what was that? And so that was 1991. So that was like more of um, you know, a, a more of a solidified encounter at that point. Um, mm -hmm. So that that's some of the details. I'm sorry. So that the Legion of Angels that took about six to nine months. Yeah, for, for that yeah. to like the salvation date or whatever people yeah. like to use. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, 
Yeah, it was. I can imagine that room feeling really like um, powerful. Yeah. And like sacred. I imagine those women didn't have a lot of people come to their meetings and be like, hey, yeah, I want to receive Jesus. Yeah. I, like, I don't, you don't hear that. Yeah. You don't hear that boldness or that desperation very often. So yeah. they were probably like, oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Cause they just did. They kind of just looked. Like there's a pause and then there yeah. was action. Yeah. Yeah. And nobody really spoke or, um, uh, and maybe I just was blank. I don't know, but it was, they just gathered around me, laid hands on me, and they probably prayed, and I just received. Yeah. One other really um, fantastic point about that prayer meeting was this other lady, her name is Gladys. Um, she was part of the church that I would later meet, that the night before that prayer meeting happened, she had a vision Oh, wow. Yeah, of someone getting saved in the prayer meeting. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I didn't find out about that till a while later. but And so, I I mean, you know, those are things that are happening that I have no language for, no understanding of, but mm. just that it's what Jesus does, what the Holy Spirit does. It's, you know, how it works. That's amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. Yeah. It's a lot. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, just to think of, like, somebody, like, God was orchestrating that, and it wasn't, like, an accident. Like, obviously, it's never an accident, mm -hmm. but it's just, like, that further confirmation, like, mm -hmm. that was the right place, the right time. Yeah. Because yeah. I, I honestly haven't heard a lot of people doing that with a group of people. Mm. Typically, it's on a Sunday or where where there isn't, like, a group of people around you, you do that in your own seat, in your isolated mind, or you're doing that at home mm -hmm. or whatever. Mm -hmm. So like you did that at home, but you publicly asked for help to do that. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, I think that's pretty special. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that was the beginning. That was the surrounding time. The surrender. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I don't know that it was so much as me as realizing uh, a surrender or even, um, you know, when they say the sinner's prayer and recognizing, well, really, actually, nobody would have had to tell me how bad I was or that mm -hmm. I'm a sinner because uh, I felt pretty, pretty not good. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, yeah, it's just that desperation, yeah. desperate people do desperate things, you know, you're desperate. Yep. Where are you going to go? Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. I was going to say Ghostbusters. That's why I was smiling. <laughs> but, um, where are you going to go? Where are you going to call? Um, but I feel like that's something that really marks your life is desperation. Yeah. And like every season, it's not like in the seasons where things are going bad that you're desperate for the Lord. I think mm -hmm. that's something that, really marked your entire life is like a desperation for the Lord in every circumstance and every journey. And that's why I think it's really important to get to know our leaders because mm -hmm. if you're lacking hunger for the Lord, hang out with pastor Janet, to be <laughs> honest. Like if you're, um, if you're wanting a desperate heart for the presence of God, hang out with Pastor Janet. Um, obviously, she's, maybe you don't know this, but she's actually my mom. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, it has, growing up, just um, you could see there's no change from day to day, from year to year, that there has not been any uh, wavering in the desperation of the Lord. Um, and so honestly, super easy hang out with the person that has the thing that you have that you want. And if you don't want to be desperate for the Lord, ask the Lord to make you want to be desperate for the Lord because that's the only way you can get through life. That's the only way you can get through a lot of those circumstances that you got through. Mm -hmm. And yeah. all of us are going through different levels of 
hardship or um, or celebration, but you still need yeah. that desperation yeah. for the Lord in celebration. Yeah. And um, so Janet really carries that super well. Thanks. You're welcome. Thank you. Mm-hmm. So um, you kind of touched on some significant people in that journey. Yeah. Um, and, and like maybe in the first, like learning what being a Christian is, like who were the significant characters and what did they do for you? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, significant people in the, um, in that time of for, um, beginning of my journey as now I'm, I received the Lord. And, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, um, no, for sure. Uh, well, you know, what's strange. No, I won't talk about that part because that's going backwards. But for sure, no, you can talk about it. No, I was just going to say, like, uh, um, you know, as you know, in your childhood, there's there's significance mm. of things. Yeah, talk happening. about that. Well, just let me see. When I was a child, um, I used to go to the Salvation Army with uh, a girlfriend of mine mm. if I slept over at her house. <laughs> and the neighbor, there was a neighbor, a gentleman in the neighborhood that would rally up kids and take them to the Salvation Army. Wow. But beforehand, you went to the donut shop mm. and got a donut and a pop. So this was always the game plan. <laughs> Food was the motivation. <laughs> that here. was the motivator, <laughs> not the Salvation Army. <laughs> no. So so there was that. I just you know as I later when I got saved, I thought, oh, isn't that super interesting about that? Mm. And I was also part of um, a girls' club at the Church of the Nazarene, which you know many years later I'm like, oh yes. The Nazarene. Because <laughs> before I was like, I don't know. So, you You're know. You're like, that's a weird word. <laughs> yeah. What's a Nazarene? You mean. <laughs> so those are. Do you mean tangerine? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So those, those, like, that's just super interesting when you look at your life, right? Mm-hmm. To see where the Lord where was. Where God was like yeah. planting seeds. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so, yes, in the, the, uh, the lady, the, the young couple that I mentioned that whom I, the first people who I knew that were born again Christians that were not afraid to let you know that they were, um, that was impactful. Yeah. Super impactful. Uh, even though I thought like, you know, please just stop talking to me because I have no idea. But you idea. still kept inviting them over. I did. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Um, but you know, to have, um, Pastor David Curry and Eileen, a part of my life, was uh, just gold. Mm -hmm. They were the pastors of the church that we ended up going to where I went to the prayer meeting and got saved. Mm. And she... She's the one that brought you to the prayer meeting? Yes. Mm -hmm. And she just continued, um, you know, the next day, do you want to come to this ladies' meeting? And the next day, do you want to come... Like, uh, you know, after this ladies' meeting at the evening, there's this other meeting. And she just continued with that. Mm -hmm. Do you want to just come over to my house? And so they were super, super significant in my journey and um, uh, my foundation. Um, Mm -hmm. And then um, definitely the ladies that I would have joined in with at the prayer meeting. Mm -hmm. Like, I probably was one of the youngest people in the room. But, oh, it was gold, super, like, just to have these people that um, loved on you, and you just learn by being there yeah. um, what what this is about, and they take they take interest in your life, and, um, you know, no one ever, no one ever um, said, now you need to stop doing this, or you need to behave this way. It was just... They just brought you along the journey with them and Mm -hmm. modeled it for you. Um, So those are um, very super, super foundational people. And uh, the ladies that I was in a Bible study with, really strong um, woman. Um, Her, she was a part of, she grew up in a Baptist church. So she, she knew the word of God really super well. Mm. And, uh, And so we're in a Pentecostal church now, but just really, really super good. What are you laughing at? I'm just... Yeah, super, just great, super experiences to be uh, engulfed with these people like that. 
Yeah. So so those are some of the main people at the beginning of my So journey. how big was that church that you went to? I don't know. It was big. Yeah. Yeah. Like they had a balcony, so. <laughs> <laughs> they had a balcony and lots of classrooms for mm. uh, uh, like programs and Sunday school classes and they had midweek programs and, okay. you know, so I, I wouldn't so know. So it was like really special, like mm-hmm. having that opportunity to basically disciple um, Eileen, be a disciple of Eileen. Yeah. Yeah. You just followed her around and yeah. Um, yeah. did all the things that she invited you to and yeah. raised your kids together. and Yeah. 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 How long, how long did you spend in that church? Not long enough with them, for sure. Um, so, um, oh, let me see. By, um, yeah, maybe three years. Okay. Yeah, because uh, by Samuel is born in 1993. Mm-hmm. So... By then you were in Bible college. Uh, he's born in September of 1993 in... In uh, by September of 1994, we we had moved and we moved down to um, a place called Peterborough, Ontario, to go to um, the Pentecostal Bible College there. Mm-hmm. So we, I guess we're three years. We were three years at um, the church in Sudbury. Was that called Glad Tidings? But I don't know that it's called that now. It's called Glad Tidings Tabernacle. Mm. Yes. <laughs> the move of the spirit was there. Yeah. 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 It was super. Anything with super. the name Tabernacle. Yeah. Yeah. Super. Yeah. Good times. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. Sudbury was kind of like, when I moved to Sudbury, it's like, oh my word, where am I moving to? This is like the moon. And it seriously <laughs> looked like that because they did mm-hmm. have, um, they had rock formations that it's just like black coal hmm. because they I can't they they I, I think it's a true story that they um at one point that they would practice uh doing like moon landing stuff there yeah NASA yeah NASA, NASA. yeah because they had like uh the Sudbury coal mine and is it called a coal mine anyway they had the towers of stuff coming out that's <laughs> polluting the world now so probably not anymore. But. Not anymore. But by the time I was leaving there, it was just I loved that place. Mm. Loved it. Was it small town or big town? Uh, well, it's up north in Canada. Kind of like this town. Mm. Mm. Maybe, maybe a little bit bigger. Okay. Uh, they had a mall. <laughs> they had a mall there. <laughs> but did it have an escalator? <laughs> no escalator. Hey. <laughs> not that big then yeah. <laughs> had a lake oh I gotta tell you about my one other friend who's been super yeah. significant okay. in my journey super significant in my journey well there's so many but <laughs> I just want to tell you about my friend Ardith that she's like in her 90s and I get to be her friend and um yeah so people like that yeah that are that are wise and godly people that Mm -hmm. pour into your life in just the most natural way yeah you know again we just she this was when we were in Spokane and and I was looking for somebody you know I need to connect with somebody and I purposely asked asked her I knew she watched I watched her and knew she was a lady of intercession and Mm -hmm. so I said ah I'd love to get together and have somebody lead me in in prayer and stuff so Mm -hmm. so that's what we did yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So you got saved in 91-ish. Yeah. And then by 94, you were in Bible college. Yes. Um, That's a big journey. And then uh, tell us all the places you've lived and, you know, okay. you can make it as brief or as long okay. as you want. And then, like, you've been a lot of places and a lot of different churches. And yeah. Okay, so from we were in Powassan, Ontario, then we were in Sudbury, Ontario. That's where I um, received salvation. Mm -hmm. Um, Then we were in Peterborough, Ontario, where we went to Bible College. So we were there for um, uh, 
What about Saint Janet? Tabitha, you're born in 1995. Yeah. So we moved there in 1994. Yeah. And I think we moved away from there in 1996. Um, then we moved up to Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario. But it's even much further up north than Sudbury. And that was our first our first um, church being on staff. Um, and when I say being on staff, that's Sean being on staff. I'm just, I'm at home. <laughs> but, you know, we're partnered, right? Mm-hmm. Um, we're one. And so that we were in Sud- Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario. Loved that place um, for two years, perhaps. And then we moved to St. Catharines, Ontario, which um, you will know of. Uh, Buffalo, Niagara Falls, mm-hmm. New York area. Buffalo. It's across the the river there. St. Catharines is. It's near there. So we were there for four years, and then we um, ventured out and moved to Washington State. Uh, and we were there for lived there for twelve years, a part of a church there for uh, eight years, and then a part of another church. On staff, yes. on at a church for yeah. eight years, yes. and then a part of a church. Yeah, we were on staff at a church for eight years, and then um, then we ventured out and um, did church, you know, like sort of like a home church kind of thing for three years, mm-hmm. and then we were a part of a church for two more years, um, another separate church before we decided to sell our house and move on down to. Redding, California, and try Beverly Hills. Yeah, moving on down. <laughs> and Redding, moving California. On. Were you a part of a church or something else? No. Oh, right. We went to BSSM, which what is what does that mean? Bethel Supernatural School of Ministry. So we went there as um, older people. What? was the most helpful thing uh, that was taught to you about living as a saint? Hmm. Yeah, that's a, that's a difficult question. When did you realize, oh, this is like a part of me and I'm, I've grown in this and a mystery (laughs) (laughs) it's an absolute mystery (laughs) it's one of the mysteries of the kingdom (laughs) it is yeah yeah yeah. Yeah. um i think because yeah you know uh that's why it says you're just you know you're being transformed yeah renewed and such like that um so i i don't quite know exactly what the question is is meaning (laughs) but so uh, like let's just have that conversation of when did it kind of click that okay you obviously knew Mm -hmm. that you needed help yeah in life yes so when did it click that oh I have the help and I I am not the same person anymore I can function in a different way than I have before Hmm. huh yeah Man, that's a that is an that is an absolute process. That's mm-hmm. you know I, without disclosing too much <laughs> of me, um, this was always significant to me. In that, okay, in my previous life, I was a swearer. Mm-hmm. I swore, like, you know, cuss words <laughs> here and there. So when I did get saved um you know I'm not even this is even before we went to Bible college so Mm -hmm. it was like an amazing thing you know you step your toe and it's there isn't that word that follows yeah so that was like what it wasn't something you tried it was just no it just happened wow and um and then along somewhere along the way in the process of my journey um in having to because realizing now that, like, um, you know, I was going through this major grieving process of mm-hmm. my loss, and so that was 
probably a lot of depression and lingering yeah. and just trying to just do life and because I know there there was there definitely was a time before I got saved that I know that I spoke words that were not life that if you know if I could do something to myself I would mm-hmm. to just alleviate what I was going through right so you had some like suicidal thoughts more than or just yeah I don't even know if it was a thought in my head it was just words that came out of my mouth because Mm. my I'm just so desperate yeah right um so recognizing that at some point along the way um that I, I I didn't have to wake up in in the morning with the hopes that today I'll be happy Mm -hmm. today I don't have to work so hard at being happy Mm. and so that took a while I think um but absolutely knowing that um there was that that change and that transformation that happened in me that I wasn't aware of but my husband was aware of Mm. and saw it um that uh, fed gave him hunger to understand what was going on with me because he was not saved at no, the time? Okay. No, he was not saved at the time when I received salvation up in Sudbury. Yeah, and when yeah. when those transformations yeah, were happening. Yeah, yeah. and uh, and just like, yeah, just having that, that joy, an absolute joy in mm-hmm. life. And, and everything was, it was just so much fun. Everything was just so much fun <laughs> hanging out with these ladies. And, you know, we went, we went. To pray, like I didn't, I didn't go see anything. We didn't do like, like spectacular things. Mm-hmm. I went to a prayer meeting. I went to Bible studies. We just hung out and shared life together yeah. without knowing that we're doing something that's biblical in that way. Like I'm just and just enjoying life, and it was really super good, really super, really super super good so um so you felt like that there when you the question being like um what was the most helpful thing yeah as being transformed into a saint it sounds like it was just so led by the holy spirit no one ever actually told you like hey you should probably not say those things no no. hey you should do this you should they just lived life with you yeah and truly it sounds like they really did have that discipleship program down where it was like we're just gonna spend time in life yeah. together yeah 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 like nobody I was never told behave this way don't behave that way mm-hmm. stop doing this start doing that so would you say the most helpful thing um in learning to be a saint was being with Jesus yeah yeah that's what yeah. it sounds like <laughs> yeah <laughs> pretty simple right yeah yeah uh, after I um after I got saved I remember asking, um, cause somehow I lost that Bible that I had mm. previously cause we had mo- in one of the moves again. Um, and this is when we were still in Sudbury at Glad Tidings Tabernacle. And I'd asked the pastor for a Bible mm-hmm. or perhaps they gave me one at one of the altar calls. And I still have that Bible today and the pages are all crumpled and falling apart. Mm. But I, I read that thing three times in one year wow. just read it through because you know people talked about it so I'm like I don't know it started at the beginning and started reading it wow you know and so yeah three times in one year yeah that's because I didn't have anything else that's 12 like, chapters a day that actually was, that's my to life to read the bible through one time it's four chapters a day so you read six or you read 12 chapters a day Okay. Of the Bible in that year. Okay. But this is your lifeline, people. Yeah. It was mine. It was just, yeah. yeah. So just to read it and so much stuff in there. Wow. Yeah. So, uh, you know, that's significant. Yeah. In uh, teaching me and uh, transforming, in, transforming me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing so much <laughs> of your journey with us. Like that covered a lot of... Yeah your history and I'm I'm sure there's more to pull out of you um but thank you for joining us and thanks for having me I would ask you what you would um for people that are like 
they haven't started their salvation journey, what would you say to those people that are in that desperate state? What advice? Just do that. Uh, really, all I said that day was, oh, God, help me. Um, and I think because of the, the desperate cry of my heart, there's, there's scripture that even says, you know, I called out to the God, I called out to God, I cried out to God, and he heard me. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So, so be honest. Yeah. It's just a, you're being desperate and you're crying out to the Lord, and it doesn't have to look a certain way. It doesn't have to have a certain language. Mm. Um, and he, he definitely will answer you, and he, he'll lead you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Amen. Janet, would you pray us out and okay. just impart desperation to the viewers and to us and to a new life? Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. All righty. Yeah. Jesus, thank you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I ask and I call out, oh God, help us. Help us here, oh God, at New Life Church in Pulaski. Help us, Lord. Come, Holy Spirit, and um, yeah, I thank you that you fan that flame that's within us Mm -hmm. and that you are the cry. You answer the cry of your people's hearts. You answer the cry of anyone who calls out, oh, God, help me. So I, I encourage the desperate cry I encourage the desperate cry of individuals. I encourage the desperate cry Mm -hmm. of new life that we would remain desperate for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, forever desperate for you, Jesus. And we thank you. Thank you that you answer. Amen. Amen. Well, hey, join us again next time. We'll hear more from Pastor Janet. And we're going to have all of our other leaders join us at some point as well. So make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you get a little like notification. <laughs> <laughs> and um, there's also a link in the description box if you feel like you want to donate to New Life or if you want to specifically donate to the podcasts. Um, that'd be great because all of it costs money. So thank thank you. you. See you guys later. Thank you. Bye. Pray for us to have a desperation for the Lord in the comings and the goings and the easy and the hard. What do I do? For a desperation in the Lord for the viewers and for us desperation. You want me to pray? Yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want me to ask you again and we can edit that part out? <laughs> okay. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. mm-hmm.